My name is Fred, Fred James. Right now, I'm looking at the most wonderful woman in the world, my wife. She's really been through the mill during the last few days, had a baby. Doc, he's a great guy. I wish Beth could pull herself together. Beth, I think we'll be able to get you home tomorrow. How will that be? I guess I'll be glad to get home. I'm such a crybaby, I don't know how you put up with me. Don't you feel embarrassed about crying? Actually, it's probably doing you a lot of good. Many mothers take it a lot harder. When I go home tomorrow, can I take the baby with me? The baby will have to stay, Beth. Feeding is a bit of a problem, and the plastic surgeon will probably want to do surgery to close the lip in a few days. Yeah, feeding's a problem. I guess we're going to have a lot of problems. You see, we've got a hair lip, a cleft palate child. Yes, I'm Fred James, just an average guy in an average city. Oh, my house is just like yours, my car too. Of course, I'm married to the best wife in all the world. And this probably doesn't make me average. You've already met her, Beth. We knew each other all the way through high school. And a couple of years later, I decided that she was the only one for me. And a couple of years after that, we had our first child, a real average guy. Except, I'm not average in one respect. Our baby is not normal. He had a hair lip and holes in the roof of his mouth. They call him a cleft palate child. And I'll never forget the first time I saw him. What do you do? Laugh? Cry? Or just be numb with shock? I felt a hundred years old. But Doc was there to cheer me up as best he could. He said the boy would be fixed up beautifully, that there were operations to be performed, and he'd look all right. But now, we had a more difficult job to do. Tell my wife. Well, we told her. And funny thing, after the first shock, she adjusted faster than I did. Mother love is a powerful force. She was the courageous one. I was a real pessimist. Well, we've learned a lot of things since those first few days. Our family doctor told us about a new approach to the cleft palate problem. He introduced us to a cleft palate team, a surgeon, a dentist, and a speech correctionist. And after Fred Jr. was a month old, the plastic surgeon repaired his lip. I have some pictures here that will show what a tremendous difference this can make. Now this boy is somewhat like ours was. And here's a picture after the operation. I think you'll agree that that's a tremendous difference. After his lip was repaired, he was ready to be brought home. He looked better now. But there were still some immediate problems for us. So we went back to the doctor's office. Well, how do you like the baby's looks now that we've fixed the lip? Well, I'm so relieved about that part of it. I think he did a wonderful job. How soon can we bring him home from the hospital? Actually, you can bring him home day after tomorrow. He's doing very nicely. Incidentally, the nurses report that he hardly cries at night. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, now, Fred. Oh, I'll admit he looks better, but there's more to it than that. All in good time, Fred. He's going to be all right. Well, there's nothing like bringing a baby home for the first time. But you've got to remember some things. Well, thank goodness I took that course for expectant mothers. That certainly helps. But I mean, you'll have some special things to remember about this baby. For example, feeding. You see, the baby will have a hard time making any sucking motions. And so you'll have to use a special nipple on his bottle, one with large holes, so that the milk runs easily. Or you might try to use a cup. That's what we use here at the hospital. But he can't sit up. Well, just hold him in the crook of your arm and pour the milk over the lower lip very slowly. Well, it doesn't sound hard. Oh, it's not really. But feeding is time-consuming. And here's another thing. 
you'll have to be very careful about possible infections. You see, the nasal area is wide open to possible colds and infections. And remember, your family doctor will want to see the child if you ever have a suspicion that he might be developing a runny nose or be getting a cough. I don't care if it will be a lot of work. It's going to be wonderful having our baby home. Well, we were happy to have Fred Jr. home. You know how it is. The excitement of scurrying around to make sure the blankets are okay, that the bottles and the diapers and so forth are on the right shelf. And I don't know how many times that night we crept over to the crib to make sure it's breathing, I guess. I suppose all parents are like that. But we also couldn't help but look at that fresh scar on his lip and wonder how the world would treat this new baby. We hoped, of course, that everything would be all right. But I wasn't so sure. But Doc was right. Things weren't too easy. Beth tired more easily. And there were other irritations. It's a cold, honey. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes he breathes so funny. I... Oh, Fred. Take it easy, honey. I know you're tired. Why don't you lay down here a few minutes? Oh, I'll bet that's Doris. No. What a time for neighbors. Oh, she means well, Fred. Oh, Doris. Come on in. Well, hello, Fred. Just thought I'd drop in for a minute to see Beth. Hi, Beth. Hello, Doris. You look tired. Fred, she's doing too much. I told you so the other day. Oh, no more so than any new mother. Yes, but you have a special birth. I don't know who I do. <laughs> Is the baby asleep? I'll just take a quick, quick peek before I go. Ah, uh, there you are, Freddy. <sighs> what a shame. He does look better, though, Beth. Look, you need some rest, and I'm a perfect babysitter. Why don't you two go out for dinner? And that's how it was at first. We worried about colds, and our neighbors helped. With hearts of gold, but clattering, unthinking tongues. But Fred continued to gain weight. And Beth and I, we desired to learn more about how we could help Fred. So we went back to the doctors. I still wasn't convinced that science had all the answers. Fred, a lot of answers have been found for the treatment of the cleft palate child. I suppose so. One answer is the general approach. The surgeon does what he can to prevent infection, the dentist takes care of the teeth, and the speech correctionist is concerned with the speech problem. Doesn't that happen now? Yes, but the difference is a matter of cooperation. The important thing in the treatment of a cleft palate child is timing. The big thing is to do the right job at the right time. And we're concerned with the whole job for his whole life. Actually, the treatment varies with the child and the nature of his malformation. Basically, the jobs are these. If there is a cleft in the lip, we have to repair that. And we've done that with Fred Jr. Then we must watch over his general health and development. Then it may be time for the dentist to give advice on teeth care. If there is a cleft in the roof of the mouth, we can sometimes repair this surgically. If the opening is too great, a prosthesis will have to be made to cover that hole in the roof of the mouth. Then the speech correctionist will be concerned with the direction of the airstream, formation of sounds, and, if necessary, the retraining of speech. We were heartened to learn more about the team approach as described by the doctor. To me, it was just so much talk. I still couldn't get a picture of how Fred Jr. was going to lead a normal life. For this reason, we were happy to receive a phone call from our doctor, and he asked us to come down and meet some members of this team. Well, Beth, Fred, I've given you some idea as to the work done by the various members of the team. Today, two of the doctors are here in the office, and I thought you might like to meet them. This is Dr. Lindquist and Dr. Sheeple-Bush. This is Beth and Fred James. I'm glad to meet you. I've been wondering what's coming next. It seems as if we've been standing still. Don't be impatient. It does take time, but it has to be done right. Yes, you said that before. Well, I think it's marvelous the way the lip looks now. Actually, Freddie's lip was fairly simple. The cleft was not too great, and it wasn't bilateral. We could do it early. What do you mean? 
Well, you recall that we did the surgery early on Freddy. These tiny babies stand the surgery well. We like to do it when he's about two weeks old, or at a time when he's gaining well and has regained his birth weight. Now that's with a single cleft, just one side of the lip. Bilateral means two sides. So you see there's no harm in waiting till the child is two or three months old, but the operation is harder and may have to be done in stages. I have some film clips here we could show you. We're putting these together to illustrate our team approach. It's not Hollywood, but it may help you to understand. Uh, George, would you turn on the projector, please? This baby is eight weeks old. Notice the cleft of the lip. The baby gets a light ether anesthetic, and the preliminary cuts are made. Surgery is then completed, and the cleft is ready to be closed. The one operation is usually enough, but minor touch-ups may have to be done later on. Here the job is done, and soon the boy will wake up hungry and active as ever. Here he is the next day, looking bright, cheerful, and hungry. Beth, notice how the nurse is using the cup. You'll have to agree, he looks a lot better. That scar will hardly be noticeable in a few years. Well, that gives a really graphic uh, picture of how you did the job on Fred Jr. What about the holes in the roof of his mouth? That's the second big surgical problem, repairing the cleft palate. A great many of these splits in the roof of the mouth can be repaired successfully by surgery. The operation is most often performed when the child is about, oh, 18 months of age, or at a time when he's just learning to talk. We want good speech development based on correct working anatomy. So you see, the surgical approach to the problem is the first active one, but he isn't through. Many times, the surgeon can help function and appearance by additional procedures clear through adult life. What about the openings that can't be repaired by surgery? That's the job for the prosthodontist. He may have to make a prosthesis, and this is Dr. Lindquist's area. Action. Yes, Fred, we've been delegated the role of assisting the plastic surgeon in creating plastic appliances to close these large openings of the palate. Now, here is a prosthesis. And you can see that we have a very large body of plastic which covers the roof of the mouth and probably closes the opening that could have been in the palate had it not been repaired. It has two clasps on either side and a tooth in the front to replace the missing tooth. These clasps fit over bands on the teeth in the back of the mouth and help hold this appliance in place. We have a bar of metal with a plastic ball attached to it that fits back into the throat area. This ball of plastic is designed to the confines of the tissues and muscles in that area. Now the tissues and muscles in that area close around this a uh, ball of plastic and help close off the oral cavity from the nasal cavity, thereby dividing and directing the airstream through the mouth rather than this appliance. Now, before we can make an appliance like this, we must first take an impression of the area, the mouth area and the tissues. We then pour up a plaster model, much as you see here or any of these, and we design on this model where the plastic is going to be placed. We then attach these accessories to this uh, piece of plastic. But what about the teeth? Aren't they often bad? Yes, Beth. The teeth are quite often bad. However, the problem is not only that of malaligned teeth, that is teeth out of the normal sequence and position, but the teeth are often badly decayed. And this is in part due to their malalignment. This prevents proper tooth brushing and a normal cleansing action of food passing over them. And two, the teeth are sometimes poorly calcified and have numerous surface defects. From this, you can see that the dental treatment for the cleft palate patient can involve restoring the teeth, that is, fillings and so forth, uh, orthodontic treatment, the straightening of the teeth, the prosthetic treatment, the making of replacements for missing teeth, and the construction of an appliance to aid in their speech. Well, I just can't see how that thing will close the opening. 
we have some film clips. So let's have George turn on the projector and we'll see how this can be accomplished. George, would you turn on the projector, please? The parents often come in with their children and see what we are doing to help their child. Now here is a prosthesis. This child has one and you can see how easy it is for her to take it out. And you can see, after she gets it out, how large the opening is that this appliance fills up. I told you that often the teeth are badly aligned. Now here's a very typical example in which the upper front teeth are completely out of position. And you see here the teeth are rotated and in very poor alignment. And the bone that in which these teeth are mounted is movable. This is a freely movable premaxilla. The parents are very interested in knowing how we make this appliance. And here we are taking an impression. The mother was with us to see how we do this. The impression material is very soft and is pressed into the mouth. And it will harden and leave an exact outline. It doesn't hurt, but it is a bit uncomfortable. In a minute, we can take it out. And you will see the detail of the roof of the mouth. And from this, we will make our appliance. You can see it also has the detail of the pharyngeal area in which our speech bulb is placed. Now, this young man has a very large appliance. And you can see that it has two clasps that fit over the bands on the two back teeth to help it hold in place much like the appliance I showed you before. You can see it has a very large, wide speech bulb on the back end of this appliance. Here we have him again putting the appliance in place, and you can see how the muscles and the tissues in the back help close around this appliance. Now here we have a young lady who is much like the other one that we saw earlier, whose two front teeth are out of position. She also has two missing teeth on either side of these two front teeth. And these will re be replaced with our appliance that you see going to place here now. Teenagers often need help. This pretty young teenager had a cleft and missing teeth and some crooked teeth. She had to have orthodontic treatment and a prosthesis after the orthodontic treatment was completed. You see we have a space here and we are placing the retainer, which will hold these teeth after the orthodontic treatment has been completed. She feels much better about her aesthetics now and the way she looks. Does it begin to make a little sense? I never realized what a complicated thing this was. Will Fred Jr. have to have all this done? Yes, he has an opening in the roof of his mouth up into the nasal cavity, which must be plugged up. I think we can close this surgically. However, if we cannot, the dentist will have to make a prosthesis. Actually, I think the cleft is closable, and that the teeth will come in in pretty good shape. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, what kills me, listening to some of these kids talk? That's a real problem, and one that must be recognized right from the beginning. Dr. Sheeplebush is the team member in this respect. He might have some answers for you. Well, how about it? Is my boy going to sound normal, or is he going to have that nasal whine? Our techniques have improved an awful lot in the last few years. Chances are he'll sound just about like any other child. Well, that's hard to believe. Well, I think perhaps we should go back and see how it happens. Children learn to talk because they enjoy talking and because they find success in talking. Now, your job with Fred Jr. is very important. Of course, all parents are speech teachers. They must listen to the child and try to understand him and encourage him to talk. If you do talk uh, with him a lot and understand him, even though he's hard to understand at first, the chances are he'll develop a good speech personality. I mean, special training begins with Fred Jr. even before he can talk? That's right. But what'll happen when he's older? Well, when Fred Jr. is two or three, he will have learned to talk. The job of the speech correctionist is to help him develop better speech. We will direct the airstream through the mouth, help him develop better resonance, and correct some of his worst consonant sounds. The chances are, uh, if the speech, uh, if the uh, surgeon or the prosthodontist has done a good job, we, we will have very good final results. Probably this diagram would help you understand the speech correction's role a little bit better. You see here we have the lips, the tongue, the hard and soft palate, the nasal area, and the pharynx. 
The larynx here below produces the voice. It comes up through the pharyngeal area and the soft palate should move up and back to force the air stream out through the mouth. If the palate is deficient, and it can't be improved through surgery, then the orthodontist will put an appliance in this position. This, of course, will help the speech corrections develop the final voice product that we want with the child. Probably, if, if you looked at the speech corrections and the child working together on the film strip that we have here, it will show you what I mean even better. This is a speech session involving Billy and his therapist, Miss Margaret Byrne. You notice how absorbed and interested they are in the speech activities that they are sharing together. Notice in the background the birthday cake and the pictures. Notice, too, that Billy is really not working at speech, but he's taking part in a speech activity that's as interesting for him as it is for, for us. Do you suppose we could shoot this around and see how many of my cards you get? You shoot it first. You'd spin it. Spin it around. <gasps> there. Let's stop it now and see how many of my cards you get. Huh? You're getting three of my cards. Would you like to have this one? Uh -huh. Okay, who is that? That mine. That's right, and who is he? That mine. A cow? No, a cow. Get and what's mine. the cow say? Hey there, I'm in there. And who is this one? Here a cat. A kitty cat. Billy, that can we? kitty cat. Fine. And Billy, you get a third one. And so let's give you Where this one. Where's my card? Where's my comb? Where's your comb? Where's your comb? I'll bet you it's here. There it is, Bill. What is that? That's my comb. Let's say that's your comb. Yeah. Can you say comb? Comb. You may have noticed that Billy and Miss Byrne were working on the K sound. This is one of the more difficult sounds for cleft palate children to make. Billy has just about mastered it. You will notice, too, during this little recorded session, that uh, they were working uh, on this sound in a very interesting way. That is, it seemed to be very interesting to Billy and the therapist. They brought the sound in in a natural way, recurrently, as they went along. This gave Billy, of course, a lot of practice. However, if we just thought about the sound, I think we might miss an important point in the session. They were also working on some of the natural attributes of speech, spontaneity, uh, creativity, and uh, the effectiveness that goes with a kind of outgoing personality. Billy has come a long way in this respect, and we feel that eventually he will have a, a natural speech personality that compares favorably with any of the normal children. Thanks a lot, Art, Dick. I believe that really helps. Fred, I think I'll show you this last bit of film. It helps demonstrate the team in action. Some children with cleft palates have a hearing loss, so we check each child carefully in the hearing clinic. The child's hand signals enable the audiologist to determine his hearing sensitivity. Notice that each child is tested in a slightly different way because of his age level. Billy hears the sound and puts a block in the can. Even such an activity as this is usually enjoyed thoroughly by the children. The otolaryngologist carefully examines the eyes, ears, nose, and the throat of each child and checks on the possibility of any difficulty. The dental examination is also an important part of the team activity during these periodic diagnostic evaluations. The speech examination seeks to determine the exact nature of the child's speech at that time. Each sound is carefully considered, both as he uses it regularly and as he is able to make it under stimulation.
Later rechecks enable the therapist to judge the results of his work. The oral surgeon examines the child's mouth structure to determine the possibility of any improvements through surgery. And finally, the entire team assembles and discusses the information gathered by each one of them. A team decision is reached before any procedures are recommended. The efforts of all members are important in the proper planning for each child. Well, those are the members of the team as referred by your family doctor. Actually, there are other members who may help when needed. You know, every time I see that little blonde boy in the films, it makes me think that's what Fred Jr. might look like in a few years. There's every chance that he'll do just as well and be just as normal. Well, I admit I feel better about it, but I'd like to know something. Is this team approach found everywhere? No, it's relatively new, but it is the trend and is becoming more common in all parts of the country. You can see that a problem as complex as this needs the advice of several types of specialists, and the team works together on each case. But what really worries me is the chance of this happening again. Should we plan to have another baby? I can't say positively that you won't have another cleft palate, but the chances are very good that your next child will be perfectly normal. Now then, too, you know how these children can be cared for. I wouldn't worry about it at all. Actually, think how much luckier you are than if Fred Jr. had been born 15 years ago. Lucky? Well, I guess in a sense we are. At least our baby is going to get a lot more love and understanding than many children get. So we talked to the doctor and came away reassured that there were many things that could be done for our baby. I could look at Beth again and we could smile and feel like that our luck wasn't so bad after all. But Beth and I know that there are a lot of problems ahead, and possibly some heartaches, especially when our little guy has some unthinking child laugh at him. But we're reassured about one thing. These specialists will do all they can to see that Fred Jr. gets a break. There's every chance that he'll have straight teeth, and that the opening to the nasal passage will be closed and that his speech will be normal. We had a shock and a tough break. Our baby is a cleft palate. The doctors say that it could happen to anyone. It might happen to you. You might have a cleft palate child. Like I did, you would probably think that you'd had it. But if it does, believe me, it's only one strike. And that's a long way from being out. <laughs>